I have to tell you, I'm absolutely boiling. <laughs> friends, I come to you today dressed as a ninja to talk cold riding gear, or cold riding, no, to talk, what am I talking about? To talk cold riding tips. <laughs> cold weather riding tips. Talk cold weather riding tips. There it is. I come to you today dressed as a ninja to talk cold weather riding outfits. As you can see, we're starting with a pretty solid base layer. I'm going to be riding today in approximately 40 degree Fahrenheit temperatures and I'm not going to be going very far. So this will be a relatively comfortable ride, especially if I am dressed for the part. I'm not going to be riding all day long. My whole little commute is going to take less than 15 minutes, but I have gone out in weather like this and you can even see my very first moto vlog. It was freezing temperatures. I think the air temperature was 32 degrees. Fahrenheit and then with the wind chill everything was colder than that so today is going to be warmer than that day so I won't have to bundle up so crazy and that day I was on the bike for a long period of time and going a lot faster so this is going to be a kind of classic like commuter ensemble but not for like a long day of adventuring on the bike this will be comfortable kind of just to get you from point A to point B and I'd say below 40 miles per hour because I'm not going to be going on the freeway and as Many of you understand when you're on the bike, the biggest thing that contributes to the cold is that wind chill factor. So the faster you're going, the higher the wind chill. I've actually got a little chart, we'll see if I can drop it here, <laughs> that compares the different wind chill factors, the air temperature with how fast you're going and your perceived temperature because you can get cold enough where it gets really dangerous. And we won't be worried about that at all today. It'll be a pretty easy peasy ride and even if it is a little uncomfortable, <laughs> we'll get there quickly. Yeah, from top to bottom, I'm just wearing a bodysuit by this brand called Somersault. They are an ethical and sustainable brand, so it's a little bit more pricey, but basically it is a mock neck or a short turtleneck. It's not the full fold over turtleneck. And this is awesome for the bike because it gives you a little bit of neck warmth without having to wrap a scarf around but I am gonna do a scarf as well. So this can be bought online and I'll link it down below. And then these leggings are just like, you know, any old leggings. I kind of recommend stuff that's a little bit more, either, you know, I know Under Armour makes thermal, ultra cold weather gear, and basically any athletic wear brand, um, otherwise leaning towards cottons and like natural materials will help keep that warmth in. Next up, I think we're gonna do our socks. I'm gonna be rocking these two pairs of socks. Um, I routinely wear two pairs of socks. If your boots are too tight, you might not be able to do this, but these are two thin pairs of socks. These I've had for a long time, and these are by Pact. So I recommend socks that are almost like knee high or over the knee socks. I'm choosing not to today, just based on the fact that I get a little bit of pain on my knees. If I'm sometimes, if there's like too much tension across the knee, because I've got Irish dance knees. So we'll start with these knee high socks. If it were extra cold out, I'd probably be doing wool socks like these, or some people do like merino wool or smart wool, but I just haven't gotten around to it. So leave your sock recommendations down in the comments. Our next layer is going to be a sweater. It's going to be a warm sweater that is relatively like thin and not too bulky. Depends on the riding jacket that you're wearing, but I tend to layer up thin layers and things that I can take off really easily because by the time you get to the office or wherever you're going, you're probably going to be too hot and not want to leave these out. This is a 100% wool vintage military sweater. Because this is a little bit scratchy, I definitely always make sure to wear something underneath and then I will take it off when I get to my destination if it's too hot. But this is awesome for on the bike because it's got a higher neck and I can unbutton it or button it more but wool and other natural fibers. Really great for keeping you warm and you can find a lot of vintage wool in second hand. Another perfect layering sweatshirt for on the bike are these lightweight sweatshirts that I saw on my website by Great Lake Supply Co, that's me. And they are so good because they aren't crazy bulky. They're almost like a super heavy t-shirt, if that makes any sense. They are awesome for underneath jackets because they don't take up a whole lot of bulk, but they keep you warm. So I will routinely layer up with this, put a long sleeve shirt underneath, like a Henley or a thermal, and then I can fit this 
really comfortably underneath the jacket without a whole lot of arm bulk and like middle bulk that can happen when you wear hoodies. So a nice crew neck, no hood on it, a uh, lightweight sweatshirt is perfect for layering. This one by Panda Moto is very similar and it does the same job. So it's got that heavier weight cotton. It is, I believe, a men's medium, so it's a little bit oversized on me. They're basically unisex sizes. So speaking of Panda Moto, they are who we'll get into for the bottom half. <laughs> These have been my go-to riding jeans if I want something that's Kevlar lined and protected. And optionally, I can add in the knee armor here. You can add it by dropping it in the top. It's quicker to do it with the pants off of you, but you can also do this with them on you. You just have to kind of like straighten your leg out and pull the armor out from there. And then it has space for hip armor as well. These pants are awesome. I love the fit. They've got the little ribbing above the knee portion. They've got just a great fit and cool colors. So here's the fit on the Panda Moto jeans. They come in a lot of different sizes and I really like that there's not too much gapping in the back here. I have kind of a curved back and I'm pretty lucky that these pants have like all these different accordion bits that help with the lean over when you're on the bike, kind of give you extra fabric to work with so nothing's ever hanging out the back and they're an awesome mid-rise. They come like right below my belly button, which is how I like riding jeans to fit. I've seen pants like Ugly Bros pants and a lot of different brands where the rise is a little bit more of a drop waist. It's just me, my own preference. I like a mid-rise, especially for riding pants like these. If you are kind of like a little bit more hourglass or ruler shape, these pants are awesome for you because I found the fit to be a little bit odd for me personally with the Ugly Bros pants. Each style has their dimensions taken so you should always just look at that. Don't go base just on whatever the size says it is. Look at the actual dimensions of the garment whenever you're shopping for riding gear. One key thing that I do when I'm riding is of course I choose like shorter layers, things that don't like flow long behind you. A lot of women's clothes can be like long and flowy. So this is a shorter fit and I can tuck things in. So you can really like block a lot of that and keep everything warm if you tuck in your layers. Next up is the riding jacket. Even though I do have the collar from the shirt underneath and the collar from my jacket, I do like to have another little layer underneath. Sometimes I would wear like a balaclava or some kind of a ski mask, but it's really not crazy cold and my commute is pretty short today, so I'm not too worried about it. I just drop in a scarf and I wrap it a couple times relatively tight and then tuck in the ends and I've never had issues with this flying off but if you are concerned you can of course get a circle scarf that doesn't have any ends so there's no way that it's going to come off but otherwise if you just kind of tuck in the ends or you can put them into the jacket itself you should be totally fine. Next up goes helmet and then I have some winter riding gloves and then we're good to go. These gloves were kindly given to me by a subscriber. All right, let's hit the road. <laughs> I had to walk to my bike this morning and I accidentally left the motorcycle key at my apartment so I was like three quarters of the way there to the garage where my bike is and I didn't have my key, so I walked back and all that walking made me so warm. I and mean, I didn't even really cool off that much on the ride here. So I'd say this is a winner. You could probably wear this closer to, I don't know. I'd still say probably with the 40, high 30s, uh, 40 plus degree range, but you can probably last longer on it. And especially if you wear nice gloves and if you wear a material like leather that's going to block a lot of the wind, you're going to be totally okay. And I suppose it depends on how cold you get, but 
I was boiling and I have like 0% body fat. And I get pretty cold. So <laughs> this helmet as well keeps things pretty warm. There's not a whole lot of airflow, especially because I have the chin curtain on underneath the helmet. And then it's got more like padding that like surrounds your face. As you can tell, I'm kind of getting like the chubby cheek look because the padding's right up against my face. And that definitely keeps things a lot more warm. So if you're looking for a pretty affordable helmet that'll do well in the cold weather, I think that the qualifier is pretty solid. It's certainly not like the coldest weather helmet, but that paired with a scarf and you're going to block a lot of the wind flow and you're going to be pretty fine, I'd say. <laughs>